Hello YouTube, if you've been watching my previous videos you'll know that I've got an ATI Radeon HD 3650 which has a broken cooling fan so I bought a replacement stock fan but I've also bought an aftermarket heatsink and cooler combo and this is the Arctic Cooling Accelero L2 Pro so we're going to be just comparing the two in terms of noise, though I think you can probably guess which is going to come out as, as the winner. Um, but I guess it's going to be a review of the Arctic Cooling Accelero L2 Pro. So let's take a look at what you get in the package. Well, the first thing that um, I noticed as I've taken this out of the box is that the fan housing is a, is a gloss black, which will look really good in Project Old Faithful. On the bottom, I've got some pre-applied thermal paste and um, I haven't taken the, uh, the plastic packaging off the bottom um, of this but as I do you can see in there um, there are some little heat sinks and they are for the memory chips and the voltage regulators and we've also got a little instruction book on how to fit it um, a usual Arctic cooling type instruction book um, case badge and some mounting screws and a little fan adapter so you can run it off a Molex and on 12 or 7 volts and then there's the uh, the cardboard packaging. Okay, so this is the replacement stock fan fitted. As I expected, very noisy. It probably won't be as noisy as that when it's idling in the computer, but um, once the video card is doing some work, that's how it's going to spin. Uh, so let's compare that with the Arctic cooling. Okay. This is a lot quieter, even on 12 volts. I don't think I really need to run this on 7, to be honest. I think it's going to be quiet enough as it is. Okay, to remove the stock heatsink, you just need to remove the screws on the back. This has two. There's actually four mounting holes. You can see the other two there. But it's only held on by two screws. So, basically, it's just a matter of unscrewing them. And you can see on the, uh, the Arctic cooling cooler, it comes with eight mounting holes. There's an inner and an outer section. So, this allows it to be compatible with different cards. So I've removed the, um, the stock cooler and I've placed on the memory chips the coolers. I'm not going to put the uh, voltage regulator ones on because there aren't any anyway um, and the stock cooler doesn't cool those but it does cool the memory chips on this side. So this is it fitted <laughs> and let's just get some power to it. It's spinning up. Uh, I think that looks great. It's really going to look good in Project Old Faithful. Um, it looks so good in there that this I've decided to put this card in there because it matches the colour scheme. My only concern is, as you can see, it's a very tall cooler. It's very light. I will say it's very, very light, but it's very, very big, and I think that is going to protrude, or it's going to cover uh, two, possibly even three, PCI slots. So let's get in the case and have a look. And here it is. It's a little dark. I don't know if you can see, but I reckon that covers just about all the remaining PCI slots. The bottom one is just visible, but I think it would be difficult to squeeze a card in. So I'm very pleased with the noise of this cooler. It is low noise. I am convinced it will cool better than the stock fan. So it gets a thumbs up for both of those. I'm concerned about its size. So if you're running a micro ATX board, you might struggle. It's probably better on a full ATX board. But other than that, this is a very good cooler for the money.